so yesterday it was um, the first day of the conference where we um, heard um, actually three panels, uh, three very concrete um, analysis of the current conditions and the situation in the Balkan migration route. Uh, our uh, guests from uh, Bosnia, from Sarajevo, and from, um, we had a journalist and activist, uh, Nijara Ahmetashevic here with us. Uh, we also had a doctor from Radolica, uh, Dimitar uh, Anakiel, who uh, was a volunteer doctor in Velika Kladusha. We also had uh, a presentation of the report on the police violence made by Infocolpa, civil initiative. Uh, we also had representatives from border crossing Spielfeld who were um, presenting again with quite a heavy reflection to the year 2015, what was happening to the first wave of my, um, refugees who came through the uh, Balkan corridor. And uh, we also had representatives of um, legal uh, office that helps uh, the migrants in, uh, in, in Ljubljana. And we concluded the day with uh, very interesting also conversations with uh, asylum seekers from an asylum uh, house in, uh, in Ljubljana. And today we will actually take a look at this um, situation from a more cultural and let's say artistic point of view and also from the Prism of Education. Since today, um, the title of the today's lectures is um, Visual Culture, uh, Arts and Education for Social Change. Um, when we were developing this conference and the concept of the conference together with Micha, uh, it was very important to address this aspect as well, since when people, refugees and migrants come to the Slovenia, also other countries of EU. Of course, this is where another uh, layer of this whole process uh, starts. And coming from this background in uh, curating and visual culture and, um, of course, also education, I think these are strategies and tools which are very important to implement. This kind of intercultural uh, exchange, knowledge ex exchange. Um, so I invited today uh, few guests. It's a big pleasure to uh, to introduce you to uh, Dr. Irfan Hosic, who is a professor of art history and theory in University of Bihać, who will also give a first lecture um, entitled "The Pixelated Trauma: From the Pixelated Trauma to uh, Didactic Wall." Uh, and uh, after Irfan's lecture, we'll have a pleasure to hear more about a very, um, I think, excellent, very much needed and very actual um, educational, non-formal educational program, which is organized by Infopeka and uh, Irena Boric. Uh, so Irena Boric and Matyvos Tumsgi will uh, present the project, which is now already, I think, in the last stages of the yearly program. We will finish in the fall, right? Um, but I, want to also, I wanted also to say a few words about the risk change uh, project in scope of which we are organizing this conference as one of the activities uh, that actually tackles these issues of migration in the 21st century. It's very wide. Um, let's say, spectrum of uh, consequences and relations to the current uh, situation right now. Um, and the whole conference and the project is also very much related to the exhibition you could see uh, in, uh, in Portal. Um, and we will also have a small guided tour through it. Maybe we take a look at the works later on uh, together. And this is where I'm going to say a little bit more about the uh, the exhibition about the artists and so on. And one of the artists is also with us today, Simon Matsuch. Um, but just a few words about Risk Change um, project. It's a project, a four-year project that started in 2016. Um, 
I'd say Kibla, it's actually a leading partner coordinator with 10 other partners from various countries uh, in Europe. Uh, so the partners come from Serbia, Malta, Hungary, France, um, also Croatia. Um, and the project itself tackles the issues of the migrations in the 21st century, takes a look in the multi-layers of this, of this uh, uh, situation, the conditions that we actually currently live in, uh, through the various aspects where we combine uh, contemporary art, education, um, also technology, especially the um, information uh, technology, uh, and through exchange and mobility, of course, um, really corresponds with the concept of the what migration it's all about, about the positivity of the cultural exchange and knowledge uh, exchange. So I think also this conference is a very need, much needed and actually a very um, open space for this kind of uh, uh, strategies that we also use when we address these uh, issues. Uh, and uh, I think that yesterday it was a very informative also day for a lot of us. We had an opportunity to hear a lot about the current situation um, from the people who were actually working in the Velika Kladusha or in the concretely uh, Balkan migration route. Uh, and now I will not speak so much anymore. I think uh, we will give the, I will invite Irfan please to join me here. And just a few words uh, about Irfan, who is a professor, as I mentioned, at the University of Bihać, uh, who presented and prepared um, a presentation in which also you will present one concrete work by Bosnian artist Mladen Miljanovic, and also introduce us to the concept of migration, uh, migrants' gaze. So thank you very much, Irfan, for coming. I'll give you the... Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much for a kind introduction and for your invitation. Um, I'm really happy that uh, those conferences are existing and that uh, they include different uh, audience from different sides uh, of... Um, practitioners, different pr and various practitioners. And uh, since I'm art historian and I mainly focus on uh, image production and artistic production and media, uh, images that are produced within uh, media industry, I will um, slightly uh, go that way. Uh, of course, I will be uh, introducing a situation in Bihać again. Uh, because um, uh, the current project that is currently um, being prepared for uh, exhibition in Bihać in the middle of July uh, with artist Mladen Milanovic from Banja Luka um, is uh, one uh, very engaged project related to the current situation in Bihać. Uh, but I will come to it later. Uh, before that, and between introducing, um, between introducing uh, current situation in Bihać and uh, presenting Mladen's, wall didactic, uh, Mladen's work, Didactic Wall, um, uh, I would like just to give um, uh, kind of uh, a little bit time on my project that I was working on uh, a year ago um, in Bihać with migrants. Um, so, let's do it. Um, so, we, I'm, I'm, uh, it, uh, we already tackled the situation in Velka Kladusha and Bihać yesterday, and uh, yes, the situation is getting worse every day and day. Um, I was just following um, social networks just in the last two hours, and uh, there are many things that are happening on in Bihać. The situation radically changed. But actually, uh, this, this development of situation was actually to, to, to be expected. I mean, the, that scenarios 
um, could be expected already a year ago when uh, Bihać and Bosnia start to be um, uh, just on, on the new, on new Balkan route. Um, Bihać is uh, figuratively and literally on the border and um, uh, the migrants who are coming and refugees who are coming to Bihać, they don't, they don't go there to, to stay. Um, the, the Bihać is not their final destination. And uh, that make uh, the situation uh, extremely different to, I would say, to Slovenia or other European countries because uh, <clears throat> they just want to pass through Bihać or Verka Kladusha or Bosnia at all. And their intention is just to stay a few days, to reorganize themselves, to regather, to make reposition, to collect their new strength, to refresh themselves and to continue their um, way. But this doesn't go very well. And um, a new situation is emerging in Bihać. Um, uh, that so-called green border between Bosnia and Croatia, I mean, there is no real, real wall. There is a lot of, um, a lot of um, uh, forest and fields which you can pass through. Uh, and that so-called green border uh, has been um, um, totally, or let's say, um, uh, closed in, 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 a, in a greater uh, frame. In, and um, the, the, the situation in Bihać um, uh, with migrants produced um, a very um, radical uh, scenarios where the state itself doesn't search for uh, long-term solutions. The state itself is focused on a short term solutions, thinking that the migrants are just on the way through Bihać and they will just very fast continue their um, trip. Um, I would call that situation in Bihać kind of um, limbo. Um, the, the, uh, the, um, the police forces and the police brutality, or let's say uh, um, state brutality on the one side, on the other side, encounters between locals, the Bihać citizens and um, migrants, which doesn't work always uh, on the best level. And as I said, the situation just changed radically in the last few days. Uh, from one side, from the other side, there is um, um, the interest of European community, which uh, doesn't want to have all those foreigners uh, in that large amount, and they w are most probably very willing to pay a lot of money to locals in any country, not only in Bosnia, but in any country out of European community, to keep those people entertained in those areas, whatever, in with which scenarios, it doesn't matter anymore. Um, I would say that th this situation produced that so-called um, uh, very unpleasant situation. And um, um, uh, this, well, you already know that, and uh, I just can uh, repeat it many times. Um, when I was um, in last year, uh, when, this, when, when, the, when that migrant, so-called migrant crisis started to be appearing and emerging, uh, I saw uh, this as an opportunity um, uh, with, uh, with my students at the university to engage ourselves with the, within the courses that I teach, art history and um, some other courses uh, close to um, art uh, theory. And uh, we were entering um, those um, camps which were on the lowest level of organization in the term of uh, the main basic human needs. So we were entering those camps, uh, so the students and me, we were holding uh, projectors, preparing uh, some um, 
movies translated, subtitled in different uh, languages, and we were uh, like trying to initiate intercultural exchange uh, and to provide more than uh, humanitarian aid. Um, uh, those are the images from just a year ago, probably from the same period of year as right now. And um, so far as I heard, that camp uh, in Borici uh, transformed, uh, they closed. It was abandoned space, which was uh, just with the intention to be sold out to some private investment. But in that moment when the crisis emerged, uh, uh, IOM appeared, the Red Cross appeared, and the situation radically uh, changed. Um, well, this is one, I know uh, many of those uh, uh, people from different countries, and th this was the, uh, in from, from June 7, so just a year ago, I think the situation was very positive, uh, the, the locals were very engaged, uh, and as Nijara yesterday explained, um, uh, cause of the luck of the state institutions, the locals, the citizens were um, uh, making a kind of um, uh, compensation of, of what doesn't exist. The locals just has been present, uh, not only uh, official initiatives and NGOs, but people who are taking their food and go just going to the parks and giving, giving food. Um, so, uh, since I'm running also one small NGO, which is not directly related to those issues, uh, it's, it's merely focused on uh, art, culture, and science, I was uh, collaborating with uh, <coughs> uh, artist Sel Selman Selma. She's originally from Bihać, but living uh, abroad. And uh, we organized several workshops in those improvi improvised camps. Mm, this is how, looked, uh, how our event looked like uh, in, uh, in, this, in the venues where, where they had uh, uh, meals spread out. So in between of the meals, we had the opportunity to uh, present our um, movies that we uh, um, prepared. Um, during that period, being um, in, uh, how to say, very present in those camps, um, I was meeting a lot of uh, people from different countries, and I discovered that uh, in their um, cell phones and smartphones, they have um, technology that allows them production of images and videos. And I was very interested and curious if they have uh, and watch what kind of, of, of imaginary they produce in their, um, in their uh, smartphones. And uh, I was starting to collect those images, of asking, asking myself um, different questions um, um, uh, um, um, what, what is the intention of those images? Do they document something? Uh, what is their um, purpose? Do they have any function? Do they have, what is their life? And um, um, especially in the time of, um, so I got those images personally from the persons that they uh, shot those images on their way from uh, the countries they are originally coming from and over those paths and routes they take from, I don't know, Nepal or uh, India or Pakistan uh, toward Bosnia, Croatia and European Union uh, countries. And I was astonished by the power and the um, meaning of those images, I didn't understood those images as uh, engaged um, visual material, although they are very political, 
um, I was actually trying to, const to, to find the, the, the co constitutional moment, what, what constitutes those images, from which are they made? I mean, they are made, they have same technological aspects uh, like our images that we are producing within our uh, cell phones, but they are uh, not produced for the um, hungry, let's say hungry eye of the Western um, audience. Uh, they are produced for something else, and I couldn't reach out for which purpose they are produced. Uh, I, I mean, we can detect in them um, like documentation of traumatical experience and uh, the relation between um, traumatized bodies uh, in the context of the nature. nature. Um, those images, they have something astonishing with the, with, with the very um, astonishing landscapes and uh, uh, magical, um, how to call, that ambience and colors from different regions and geographies. But, the, uh, but at the end, they don't. Um, they don't, they, they are not produced for National Geographic or for those fancy um, po popularization of natural event, na nature and, and, and natural um, uh, phenomena. They have uh, that very strong so social moment in between. Uh, that was the first image that I uh, encountered by, uh, it was provided to me by one Syrian uh, young man, Amjad Masarani. Uh, all of those young men, they already reached their final destination somewhere in France, Germany, or whatever. And I, I found that image so astonishing, that semi-naked semi body um, of a young man in a very um, touristically, uh, let's say, aesthetically uh, ambient that ambience that we all know, uh, but having totally different social background. Um, and those images, they, they, we understand them. Uh, I mean, we cannot away, avoid understanding of those images, um, uh, especially nowadays uh, when the social um, networks and social platforms and selfie culture is so present. So I just want to skip a few slides before and to mention two projects that I was having as a comparison model when I was um, uh, observing those images. And the first of those is um, that Instagram profile uh, under the name Abdu Diouf uh, with 1993. Uh, this is the name. So you can really go on your on, on Instagram and find that find that profiles, that profile. It was produced in 2015, and I can remember the moment uh, when I was reading foreign news that I got that information in 2015 about that profile, and I immediately dropped by and I was going through that profile. I will not show you that profile because it's not focus of my work, but. Um, in some later point, uh, that profile, um, um, it was announced that is a fake profile made for the sake as a advertising, as a, as a real uh, pro propaganda, propaganda strategy to um, um, advertise one uh, photographic, big photograph exhibition in France. Um, within that profile, it was uh, listed the fake story, the fake story, the in, like like movie inscenation of one young man uh, being uh, allegedly from Senegal. He was traveling from his village direction, France, and that everything that he's experiencing on 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 his uh, on his uh, route, uh, he was. Uh, allegedly documenting that and posting. Obviously, this was fake, but this was very, very strong. If you go to that, uh, it's 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 very uh, alive. It's very tangible uh, story. It's uh, um, and uh, it's very interesting. I I like that uh, profile, although it's it's a fake one. Um, and another project that was made by famous uh, uh, French photographer. 
and documentarist Olivier Jobard. Uh, he was, he's, uh, he's a photojournalist, typical photojournalist, looking for adventures, um, documenting different stories in the world. But one of those, Kingsley from 2004, was uh, one very strong. He was really um, following one guy from Cameroon, starting with him in Cameroon and traveling with him to France through all obstacles and all risks that the migrants and refugees are going through. Um, you can find that in the internet and uh, read more about it. Um, but I was, as I said, I was really um, stuck with, with, with motivation uh, uh, or let's say triggering question of my project because when I collected, collected a bunch of those images I was asking myself uh, those few questions what, what is their purpose, what is the, um, what is the, the, the intention and what is the function of, of, the ima of those images uh, that I collected uh, because nowadays the images they have a life, they have a function, they have intention, they have a uh, very real and very uh, strong purpose, but I couldn't found so easily um, uh, the proper questions. So the only questions that so I don't I don't have an answers, uh, but the only question that I found somehow uh, um, logical for the, to, to 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 be to balance that project is what. Are not what are not those images, not what they are, but oppositely what they are not. Um, just to show you a few of them, they are made in a different um, areas from Pakistan to Croatia. Uh, that one is very simplified. It's made by one um, Pakistani guy, Wakil Murshad. Um, he was telling me short story. I mean, this is very simple image. We, we, we I mean, we make, we even, we, we make some uh, similar images like that one. But that image has fence. And uh, he was allegedly um, observing Macedonia from Greece in the moment when the Macedonia, years ago, uh, was... Um, uh, the big goal for many of those migrants a few years ago. And it's so simple image loaded with so much um, meaning, layers, emotions, intentions, and other things. Um, uh, those are uh, the newest one that I uh, collected and uh, they are made in Croatia. So that guy, Ali Hamza, sent me those images when he reached the European countries. He remembered, he, he gave me some images previously when he was in Bihać, but when he reached uh, European countries, uh, he was sending me those images. He was making those images especially for me. He said, oh, I remember that you collect those images. And he, this, th th that image shows how they are collecting water. We heard yesterday the story uh, how it is easy to um, be uh, alien in the forests of Slovenia because there is a lot of water around, but how it is heavy to be um, um, hidden in a forest in Croatia because there is no lot of springs on that route and no no quells and no water so they are collecting very dirty water. I just choose some of uh, images I have. I didn't put all the images I collected. That was uh, that one was uh, most probably close. Uh, he he made me a drawing. He drove me his route. I don't show it today here. Uh, that was very close to Rijeka, that image, and they probably the, the group that he was traveling with, they, they reached the peak of, of, of one uh, mountain and made that very astonishing photo. Um, now, coming to the, um, let's say, uh, recent project that I'm um, 
collab working on right now. Uh, I'm curating a show with um, Bosnian artist, um, <coughs> excuse me, Mladen Milanovic. Um, he, I was collaborating with him in uh, Venice a few years ago in 2013. And he's from Banja Luka, which is from another part of Bosnia, like uh, Republika Srpska, like entity with uh, predominated um, Serbian, uh, ethnically Serbian population. And um, we developed um, an engaged uh, project uh, called Didactic Wall. Um, the project is um, uh, perfectly fits in the um, artistic production of uh, Mladen Milanovic because he was always working uh, with uh, social groups um, uh, which are on the edge or which are in the kind of limbos in between and Bihać is one of uh, those uh, population, uh, place where the, this population right now live. Um, uh, just to give a brief, um, I will show you a few uh, images from the book that we will publish very soon. Um, um, Mladen Miljanović was uh, professionally trained as a military officer. And uh, when uh, the um, military base where, where he served was abandoned with the new Bosnian NATO strategy, uh, that space of that Bosnian military base was transformed into um, university. And Fine Art Academy opened in that space. And he just continued living there in the military base, but that time as a student of Fine Art Academy, and now he's working at, also in that space as a teacher of Fine Art Academy in, in Banja Luka. So he used, very simple and very interesting, um, he used a very simple strategy. Uh, he used illustrations and um, images from military educational uh, books and publications from uh, former Yugoslav army, but contemporary books too. Um, he used those illustrations uh, to make kind of tutorial and set of instructions for migrants who are stuck in Bihać and Velika Kladuša, but who are intending to uh, go through all those obstacles. They can be uh, like artificial, artificial obstacles or natural obstacles and um, he produced a bunch of illustrations. He just convert military language into civic language, very engaged language. And <clears throat> yes, we will have an opening of that show in uh, June 15th and the round table just day after in a city gallery of Bihać. Um, this, is, this is one of his previous work called Strike. Um, he's always uh, was dealing as an artist. He was always dealing with the borders, with the social, as I just mentioned, with the groups on the border, trying to reach over certain mental, geographical, or social borders. And the uh, didactic wall um, looks is very adapted. It's, it's, it's strongly and radically and totally um, adapted and adjusted to the current situation. So he was researching um, the main obstacles and main scenarios of, um, of migrants and refugees. And uh, he was making uh, instructions for them uh, in, in, with, with uh, expression of, and the style of, uh, of illustration um, style, um, translating uh, those instructions in several uh, languages. Um, we are, we, we are uh, uh, the, so the, the, the main um, parts of that artwork will be out of two pieces. Uh, the first piece will be on the marble, 
uh, he's using marble as a um, very significant material to inscribe certain values and certain, um, how to say, informations in a, in, in a stone uh, uh, focusing almost on a sacral uh, meaning of um, uh, message which is um, inscribed in, in something very strong material such as stone is. And um, it, it is a large scale uh, installation with over two meters height and uh, almost 10, 10, 10 meters length. Um, Yes, those are, we, uh, we agreed, uh, so we are just, the, the Bihać is just the starting point of that project, but um, uh, we, uh, me as a curator and him as an artist and we as a team, we have been aware about uh, uh, migrant situation globally, so we put also translations into Spanish language, uh, thinking that, um, uh, those instructions can be uh, also used in a in a in a uh, United States of America. I mean, on the border between Mexico and United States of America. Uh, what I was uh, trying to say and skip to another um, story. So the main object is the monumental stone installation, but the second part of that uh, piece of art is um, um, the book that we will produce. And uh, that book um, is uh, in this has the size of the pocket book, so it's not it's it is not a real artistic catalog that uh, will be in uh, presented in fancy artistic places, but it will be really um, spread out among uh, migrants and refugees in Bihać with intention to be useful and to be educational. Um, with a lot of different, um, with a lot of different instructions, um, but the, the the highlight uh, and the most, uh, um, I mean, the, the artist uh, he was aware that the migrants are also exposed to different dangers in the forest. Uh, living in Bihać, I'm always uh, getting news and informations that uh, um, about uh, sad scenarios and all people who are working on, on the field uh, in Bosnia, around uh, uh, Northwest uh, Bosnia, know that uh, a lot of, um, um, lot of very dangerous scenarios are happening, um, the people are dying, uh, they are just losing themselves uh, in the winter time. They are um, having uh, troubles with with the cold. In the summertime, they have uh, uh, troubles with the animals and with other different obstacles and um, challenges. And um, that book that we are just right now producing will have um, the cover of the book. The last the, the last page and the cover of the book will contain. Uh, again, uh, one of those, um, so I don't know how you say in English, like ph phosphate or something which is flammable, which can be, uh, uh, um, with, w w which you can make a fire out of it, but not the real fire, but the, by the, by the smoke, the real uh, ur urgent smoke, um, where you can add a lot, so for the sa for for the purpose of saving life, because uh, sometimes the um, mountain uh, and the forest uh, agencies they have a problem. They they sometimes they know that uh, it's not anymore. I don't speak at the moment about police forces. They are they are looking for the migrants. I'm um, speaking right now about uh, uh, civil uh, agencies who are sometimes trying to reach migrants who get lost or who are endangered or who are just uh, uh, to, to, to lose their life so they can um, turn that page on, uh, activate that uh, smoke and show themselves, which are very typical uh, signs and tools of military correspondence. Um, that would be all what I would 
have to say for right now. Uh, I'm inviting you all uh, to Bihać in uh, mid of July. Uh, you are all, all very welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Irfan, for, uh, for this lecture. Uh, we have a few minutes, of course, for some questions from the public, but if, if I can say something first. <laughs> what, of course, in the first part of your um, lecture, I think it also stood out when you were speaking about the images produced by, um, um, by people you met, of course, uh, in Bihać but especially maybe also the, the, the situation of the fake profile on the Instagram, introducing this big show in France, for example. So for me, it's also maybe this, again, this kind of uh, starting point to think about this um, attitude from you know, the West, the Europe, France as one of the uh, um, strongest, most powerful countries in uh, Europe with a history as it has. Um, actually reappropriating this kind of strategy you know, of, of, of faking this profile by someone who is directly, indirectly, his, his trauma is actually um, sparkled with the, uh, um, or initiated by this geopolitical uh, um, relations um, with the Middle East and other countries, of course. But what does this actually mean, you know, like when, when an exhibition in Paris or in France is uh, promoted through this kind of method, let's say, of faking this kind of profile of someone who is actually, um, I mean, I, thi I think it's a very problematic thing also here. Like, so I, I wanted maybe to hear more about uh, your opinion on this. Um. When I was, uh, first time, when I was uh, coming to that profile via one German media channel, which uh, didn't present that uh, Instagram channel as a fake, so it was like real, it was presented as real, it needed maybe a few days that they discovered that it's fake. Um, uh, I was, of course, very uh, interested in to see that image production and uh, uh, when you when you go to this profile, uh, this is live live feed of s alleged uh, migrant who is saying, "Oh, we just stranded to this beach. I almost lost my life, but thanks God, I am now alive." And you just you just follow that uh, virtual uh, image, maybe almost uh, uh, virtual reality, uh, like a show re reality show of. Uh, of of that uh, migrant, but coming to your question, so later on, uh, when they discovered that the, the 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 profile is fake, there were a lot of um, reflections from different sides, who were just questioning the same questions that uh, we are uh, right now talking about. But uh, I mean, uh, uh, using uh, uh, a shocking and. Um, um, Provoking material in the marketing strategy in or in arts, it's not, it's a not, it's not new uh, str issue in 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 in, a, in the world we live in. Uh, I would say that uh, the whole concept of modern uh, modernism uh, has been established and funded on the strategies of of um, of. Um, making scandals of making uh, shocking and intriguing material which attracts attention. We can just think uh, in that moment about Marcel Duchamp and his strategies are, which later became a, a norm and standard within art production and had immense influence in the post-Duchamp art production. Uh, or I don't know, even from now, from nowadays perspective, like um, Gustave Courbet, like uh, the protagonists of, of uh, um, modernism, they have been all 
uh, or Edward Manet, they have been using Doruchak Natravi like that, uh, I don't know what is the name in English, uh, that famous image. They all, they have been using the strategies of, of provo provocation. So um, um, I think just that we are living in the world where uh, um, all legi legitimate actions uh, which are available, they will be uh, used or abused by uh, managers, by art managers, even by artists. Artists are just uh, always uh, imagining the world in another way, and uh, I think so it's problematic, but uh, when the um, critics start to reflect on that fake profile, uh, then the whole story uh, went extremely transparent. That guy, um, uh, that uh, African guy that was a uh, main protagonist of that uh, profile, he was like one, uh, one, one French citizen. Uh, uh, he was a, sp a sport, he was an um, athlete. athlete, he was an ad athlete, and he was uh, uh, like, uh, it, to him it was offered that he earn a bit more money and he, was, he didn't think about uh, any consequences of the, that project. So it is problematic, but uh, we are living in the time where those strategies has been inherited from in the last hundred years. Yeah, I, this is also what one was why I was wanted to ask this question because you were already you already wrote few texts related to this scandal and so on. But it was, I mean, my consideration here is especially from this, let's say, moral ethical point of view of using maybe someone's real trauma, you know, in this strategy as like promoting some Western, let's say, privileged exhibition that will be produced in, in, in France, for example. But I think Dimitar had a question or a comment. Maybe I can give you this, huh? Or you can, or you can come here. <laughs> I just uh, want to step back to this uh, comment because uh, I think uh, Marcel Dishan uh, was shocking through the concept. So, so it was uh, something different. So it is artist concept of making sh 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 shock. But uh, here we have no artist. We have human working in industry who is just taking taking something which is uh, sh shocking to maybe make money so i think it is two very different things and i i wouldn't agree that uh, that this profile can be in the same level as dishamp or doluchak na travi doluchak na travi u biti je izneo umetnosti za teljeja u travu. Yeah, so, moved art from the studio to grass. Uh, so, for me, what you ask that it is moral problem, I think it is, it is moral problem. This is one aspect, one question. And another is working with these images. Do you have some topics? Do you find topics or group of topics uh, they made? Because it is very interesting to me to find how they think. Because focusing on topics, we can find their interest. Thank you, Dimitar. Should I say something? Um, well, the first question or first comment is is absolutely right, but there is also a fact, um, and I don't defend any situation here. This is just factogra factography that uh, in the time when Duchamp's concept has been produced or Edouard Manet painting has been shown or Gustave Courbet um, vagina in a large scale has been shown, uh, which was also very shocking images in that time. All those images shocked persons, 
critics uh, and uh, art managers and the whole art industry in that time. So they, all those images, uh, they didn't gain understanding and success uh, immediately. So it needed time and critical reflection to uh, critical time to reflect on those images and to consider them as a um, concept, concept um, um, how to say, change of the concept in the, in the world history. This, that answer, that my, co my j current comment doesn't say anything about um, moral uh, background of that fake profile. Um, it is very problematic. Um, maybe it's a less, prob it, I mean, when something is problematic, it is problematic, so it cannot be less or more problematic, but when we are discussing about it and we are talking about it and we are just analyzing, I think we can uh, use few nuances and I would say that uh, it is less problematic uh, because it didn't use um, a real person, so it has been, it was a fiction. So it was a fictional um, story. Uh, we are reading fictions, we are watching movies. Uh, of course, the movies and the artistic material and artistic production always deals and should deal with moral and ethical values. This is what I'm personally very believing in. But as I said, it has a less um, problematic background since uh, it was a fictional approach. Fiction is legitimate way of artistic expression nowadays, uh, but still we have the right to criticize it. And, um, well, I said too long answer. What was your second observation? Top topics. topics, yes. Um, I don't have topics yet. Um, Maybe, uh, maybe I don't have enough images to select them through different f folders and to make classification and to make a next level of, of eventual analysis. Maybe if I would continue working on that project and that project bears a lot, huge potential, it can be, I mean, since, since it's about images and um, uh, since it's, it's a very um, democratic way of producing images, everybody has a cell phone, and cell phones, uh, you know that as a person who is engaged uh, in Velika Kladusha, are the main tool of, uh, of migrants and foreigners in Bosnia, because I would say uh, cell phones are giving them um, a bridge it's a big bridge between uh, separations, borders. It's a kind of small uh, window in their lost uh, world, uh, the words that they lost. So um, it's a pretty democratic um, medium. Everybody has it in his pocket or almost everybody. So if I continue in, in working on that project, I think it, it will organically develop um, that way to, to make uh, certain selections, topics. There are topics. In, uh, even in those images that I showed, there are several topics, but I didn't... Uh, I, I've published one text on that, on that um, um, imaginary, and uh, I didn't work in that text uh, with the topics, but this could be uh, a next level of the project. And I have to just to add that moment that yesterday's lecture given by uh, Jack, what was his uh, another name? Um, yes, I didn't, uh, I, 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 did you recognize his last slide that he showed yesterday? His yes, last slide in his presentation was about those masculine images of Croatian policemen who, which he uh, followed via fake uh, Instagram profile and he collected a bunch of those Croatian policemen images which I found so inspiring and um, I, 
I didn't know about that perspective. And uh, he showed that slide and it open, opened immediately for me personally um, kind of another side of that story. Still, I'm working about that so-called migrant gaze because this is the production. It is not the production of images that is made by photojournalist uh, Olivier Jobard. It's not a fake profile made by uh, that photo uh, show in France. It's made by the migrants themselves and the gaze that they have and the capturing of the moment that they think it should be captured, which was so uh, direct and so um, immediate, very immediate. So thank you for your comment. I think it's also interesting here, I mean, to think that it's not something that I would have any kind of, um, let's say, final answer, but it's opened a lot of this consideration also exactly about who is now the one who produces these images, uh, so migrants, and how this is read through it, like you're already describing it, like for example, it still reminds me also of this uh, project by this collective from Syria. And please do excuse me now, I maybe will pronounce it wrong, Abu Danara, do, Irina, you maybe know it? They were, you know, the Syrian collective that was also part of the previous documenta. Um, we will, um, Abu, Abu, I think it's uh, Abu Danara, but I will put the link later on so you see it. Uh, no, 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 it's, uh, it's actually, it's, yeah, but this one starts with, uh, it's, um, it's a collective actually that was mm -hmm. launching these images of the Syrian war through their films and they were all actually filmmakers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this was also presented in this large scale exhibitions, for example, and biennials, such as Venice Biennial Documento and so on. Okay, so I think these are here also these kind of questions where, uh, of course, here is, but they were also collecting the images from the people's cell phones from the Syrian streets or like in Aleppo or Damascus and so on. But then it's also this question of what now happens with these images when you contextualize them in such large scale uh, exhibitions maybe as the ones mm -hmm. that I mentioned, mm -hmm. which are problematic in itself because of the strategies, because of the financing, mm -hmm. because of this, I mean, very infrastructural geopolit uh, geopolitical uh, relations that we have towards this, you know, also from, the, from this very Western perspective again here. Um, so I was thinking also when I was reading your article in, in Oslo Bojenia and now uh, here, for example, what would actually happen when we when you do a project like this, yes, yes. about the authorship, mm -hmm. of course, or if this is a relevant question or it's not, you know? So mm -hmm. it was something like also you said in your lecture, how many questions you had and how to f formulate this kind mm -hmm. of questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have now, of course, any answers, but maybe no. also if someone also has uh, any kind of opinion from the public, maybe, maybe Irina. <laughs> do you want to maybe? Maybe you can also sit here with us, put another chair. But uh, I was just curious about uh, what is the life of the images from your collection. So for now I see that you have done certain research and it's more like a theoretical one, but then do you see it maybe to become alive in a certain exhibition or not really? And also, I mean, I noticed that you, like, you, you take care of uh, the authors of the photographies. Mm -hmm. Those images are definitely curatable, let's say. They can be uh, curated in many different ways. Um, their, what I recognize, their intention, or one of uh, main elements of their constitution is not to be publicly visible. This is for sure. Yeah, exactly, sorry to interrupt, but yes. exactly this intimacy that it's, yes. that they, Hold that they constitute of, and mm -hmm. also, you know, as I was watching at the um, the images where they are uh, lying in the grass, you mm -hmm. know, or, or or changing their clothes mm -hmm. and so on. It's also this kind of you have this very paradoxical maybe point of view of looking at something that seems on the first glance, if you would not 
author the image, if you would not contextualize it, it would, you know, maybe be like, okay, someone is having a holiday, you know, oh, yes, if, if yes. it's even less, if it's more abstracted image in a way, mm -hmm. you know, but then it comes with this context, the political dimension of this image itself. I mean, every image, I think it's political in itself anyway, it is, with through the visual language, but sorry for the interruption. Just uh, No, they are curatable. Um, and uh, for example, that guy, uh, which I screenshotted his post from Facebook a year ago, Ali Hamza, and many other refugees and migrants, they don't put those alternate images on their social accounts. They are always trying to curate their own uh, social profiles with aesthetically acceptable images, let's say, allegedly, uh, so-called... Um, acceptable images which are uh, suggesting kind of uh, fancy lifestyle, uh, young people are having fun. I met, uh, I can remember when the first day I was looking, it was the late winter in Bihaj in 2018, and I just heard that, they, that there are some migrants around. I couldn't find them. So this was just very beginning. And I was driving with my car through the city to find any and to see what they need. And one friend of mine and me, we find them in the bus station and we invited them for a dinner and for a drink in a local bar and a restaurant. And uh, we immediately exchanged the contacts. And uh, later, that friend of mine, he's a Bosnian, he's in Bihaj, he sent me a link, Facebook link, to one guy that we yesterday met uh, the guy who is having very heavy situation in Bihaj. It was a winter, it was a huge snow, I can remember very well. They don't have money or have very little money, and he's from, that guy is from Pakistan. I don't speak about that one right now. But on his Facebook, he is living a real good young man life. He is going through the Bosnian malls, um, in a fancy clothes, making selfies and posting those images which he would like to present himself to his friends and to whom, whomever. Uh, so uh, those images, they have uh, uh, not that one, they are for the public, they are for the wider audience, but another one, they are just uh, very loaded. Um, they have that cinematic... Uh, drama inside. They have also something very, in the in a certain moments, they have that that literacy, liter, li, um, uh, po poetical literacy. Let's say in a certain moment with those natural surroundings and with all those beauties, with hills and blue skies, or even snow. I mean, when I go hiking with my family. The snow images are nice, and the hills with cover with snow. Those are touristic images. That we we tourists we make those images with joy, but when you uh, see those images within other contexts, they are getting to be very, uh, I would say, urgent and very loud. Although they are not made with purpose to be loud and and urgent, they have that smooth. They are. Uh, the famous theoretician, um, W. Uh, Mitchell, yes, he has so long name, I always have a problem to say, to pronounce his name. Um, he's, he wrote, he's, he was, I mean, he's famous for his theoretical approach about images, and he was saying uh, that they are alive images, just to make it brief, they are alive and dead images, and I would describe those images as a dead images because they are not produced to be seen, but Mitchell is claiming when the image is seen for the first time by someone, the image is getting to be enliven, il dobro rečeno, enliven, alive, awoke like, yes. So that's very interesting. So there is a lot of layers between those images which I'm still trying to um, investigate and to, to understand, to learn about. And uh, just to, I mean, f um, okay, that would be, I'll say, okay, thank you. <laughs> no, yeah, it's a very complex topic anyway, especially now when we live through this kind of very blurred lines 
thanks or not thanks to the social media where you know, it's a, it's a totally different approach to image making processes, the state of, of the image, the, the, the visual discourse on this different kind of levels, even if, if, you, if we see it from a very personal individual to collective global maybe uh, um, level. But also, um, well, uh, my, does anyone have questions from the audience maybe or some comments? Then I would uh, like to thank you, Irfan, for coming, for accepting our invitation and to give this lecture. I think it opens a lot of questions for any one of us here to think about because it's also something that is kind of related to our everyday lives uh, as well, in different aspects, of course. Um, and um, maybe we have three minute break for, for water. There's water and coffee and please help yourself and then we'll continue. Uh, with the second part of uh, today, where Irena Boric and uh, Matius uh, Tumsgi will give a presentation of the Sad Me Glass in non formal educational program, Seven Voice in English, just to translate it, uh, where uh, we will also speak a little bit more about the, let's say, political dimension of what education actually is and how. Uh, we can implement or how, what is the role of these kind of programs also in the context of intercultural exchange and knowledge exchange uh, in, in general. So, thank you.